Hey everybody, Jake here for Dude Ranch DIY. Welcome back to the channel. We are back yet again in the wood yard. It is that time of year. This is like the final push to get as much wood split as I possibly can. That way it'll still be dry for the upcoming winter. And obviously I'm not talking about red oak. I'm talking about like your ash, your maple, your cherry, stuff like that, um, that dries out really quick. Now, um, I have a full tote behind me right here that I split up in the last video, and I need to find a spot for it in my row of IBC totes. Uh, let me show you what I got going on. So as you guys know, I love IBC totes. They save me time and effort and energy in many ways, but I got this gap here, and I don't really know how to go about dealing with it because this stuff is my oldest firewood that's been sitting here for like over a year. Some of it is red oak, so it's not ready to go yet. It probably needs another like six months to a year. But all these totes right up here in the front are all ash and is ready to go. And this stuff sequentially, as I get farther and farther away, gets less and less seasoned, meaning that I split this, uh, you know, like this is the oldest firewood and the stuff all the way down at the end there, I just split up the other day. Um, so I want to fill in this gap here without having to move all these totes, but I also want to be able to denote, you know, like where the older wood is. Um, so I think I'm just going to use this tree kind of as a marker and I'll know that like, you know, older wood goes to the left and newer wood is going to go to the right. And as I sell this wood and get rid of it, I'll just keep uh, stacking in freshly split totes. Um, going, you know, to the right of the tree. So this white oak tree here is going to be my marker. All right, guys, so we got that full tote out of the way, got a fresh one in place. Uh, can you tell that my pallet fork frame is a little bit heavier than the IBC tote? <laughs> um, I threw on the Wicked Grapple there and just put two ash logs, one on the bucking table and another one in preparation. Um, I've been using the MS290 Farm Boss, which I converted to a MS390 and ported the exhaust and stuff over the winter. I know I've mentioned that in the past couple of videos, but today I'm going to exercise the MS362. Um, it's actually in the saw box here of the International. Um, and I'm gonna give it a quick touch up and then we are going to get to cutting and hopefully we can split up enough wood to fill up that IBC tote. I've been trying to do one IBC tote roughly every day if I can. Um, it's pretty hot out today. It's like 90 degrees, but we're out here in the wood yard and we are blessed to have some shade back here and a nice breeze. So I figured we might as well get some work done. Alright, there we 
there she is. Okay guys, so we got the 362 in the vise I have out here and uh, I just need to switch up the file I'm using. Um, for this chain on this saw, I use a, what is this? A 13 64ths file here um, to correspond with my 3 8 inch pitch chain. Now by no means is this going to be a tutorial on how to sharpen a chainsaw because um, nobody ever wins at making a video like that. But um, I'm just going to show you how I sharpen a chainsaw. Um, and I do tree work on a daily basis. So that means that I sharpen chainsaws on a daily basis. Um, so I'd like to think that I know what I'm talking about. I mean, I get my saws sharp. So that's all that matters in the end. Um, so I have a couple different things. I have this handle here. I also have these steel two-in-ones, but I find that sometimes the steel two-in-ones take down the rakers a bit too much. Um, and we're just doing a quick touch up on this chain here. It's already in pretty good shape. Um, so we're just gonna put a quick edge on it. So I like to keep my chain uh, with the chain break off and I always mark a tooth with a big Sharpie. That way you know where you start. And uh, most important thing is just getting that right angle. Um, and you can kind of feel when you get that right angle because you'll feel the file bite, especially if it's a nice fresh file like this is. Um, for beginners, there are little guidelines on the back um, and those serve two purposes. That's one, to follow that angle uh, for the tooth and two, it lets you know when you need a new chain. If you're filed back to that point, it's time for a new chain. So I did three passes. I'm gonna do a fourth and now I'm gonna move on. Every uh, couple teeth or so, you wanna just knock out your file, kinda get some of those grindings off there and uh, clean it out. One thing you wanna make sure of as well is to just keep the file nice and level. Um, you don't want to dive down because then you'll actually start digging into these uh, chain links that hold the chain together. And uh, I actually have seen people that have filed so far through them um, that they can actually snap. So you definitely don't wanna do that. I also like to rotate the file as I'm sharpening so as not to wear down just one spot on the file, but to wear the whole thing evenly. And we're back to the beginning, just like that. So now I'll just switch sides and uh, do the same thing for the other side. Now you always want to keep um, your sides even with the number of strokes that you do with the file. Um, otherwise your saw will start cutting to the left or the right. And uh, that's never a good thing. We want nice straight cuts. So I'm going to do four passes on this side as well. And there we are. Okay, so went through all the teeth. Four passes each. If uh, camera will focus here. And uh, that's what my teeth look like. Let me come around to the front here. Now, when you're looking at the teeth, you never want a big sharp hook in it. You almost want it to be like the shape of a banana um, without a huge hook to it. Um, and that's basically how I go about sharpening my saws. Again, there are many different ways to sharpen saws, just like there are many different ways to skin a cat. I am not claiming to be uh, the end all be all way to do this. Uh, there's square files. There's bench grinders, there's Dremel tools, all different ways to do it. This is just how I do it when I'm out here in the wood yard. So take it or leave it, but I guarantee you this saw is sharp.
Well guys, that is all of that wood. All that wood in that pile over there is gone. Um, I was thinking while I was cutting all this, there was a mix of ash and hickory. This was actually all from my parents' house. Um, I did a job back there with my guys, um, I don't know, maybe like a year and a half ago now, maybe it was two years ago, uh, where, well, no, not two years ago. It was probably about a year and a half ago because I brought the wood here, so we had to be on this property. But I took down a massive ash tree, which was the tree that made me want to get into this industry and want to become a tree climber and then further move on my education to become an arborist. And I think I appropriately called that video the tree that started it all. Um, I'll try and find a link to it and put it up above up here. But uh, that was a cool video where we actually unfortunately had to take down this giant ash tree because it succumbed to the emerald ash borer. It was starting to get dangerous, uh, you know, big pieces falling down, my father mowing the lawn and everything. So before it got too, too bad, um, we took it down and we also took down a bunch of other trees as we always do when we go over to my parents' house. It's like an all on mad dash to get as much tree work done in one day as possible because I cut them a pretty good deal. Um, so anyway, all this ash and hickory that I've been cutting and splitting up in uh, the last video and this video is from that job, I think. Um, and that is the end of it. So this saw clearly the MS-362, I, uh, I sharpened it pretty well. We got really nice saw chips here, a nice pile of them. Um, I don't really have any use for them, but uh, maybe Chris can use them for his chickens or something. So let's see, it is six o'clock. I probably got another half hour or so. Sarah's having a friend over tonight for dinner and I promised that I would do the grilling for them so that they can just relax and enjoy. Um, so we got about a half an hour. Let's see how much we can get done in a half hour with the uh, Rugged Made Splitter over here. <laughs> Well guys, we split for 23 minutes, start at six o'clock, and uh, we've got just about half a tote here. Um, this stuff is big, and uh, but it's making some really nice ash firewood. We just ran out of gas, unfortunately. So uh, all my gas cans, that one's empty, and I got another empty one in the tractor. So I gotta run back to the little barn and uh, grab some more gas, but uh, we're doing good. That first piece was really gnarly. It took me about 10 minutes just to split down that first big one. But, um, you know, these big ones, you kind of get into a rhythm of it and uh, a pattern. You kind of follow that pattern um, throughout the piece. You know, I, I raise the four-way wedge up all the way, split it into four big quarters, and then work on each of those quarters um, from there on out. Uh, basically, with the wedge, just drop down a little bit lower, and uh, it makes some, some really nice-sized pieces of firewood. Um, so I'm excited when this uh, wood will be dry. It'll be really nice to burn and to sell. So let me go grab some more gas. So, so these two are empty. And here's the inside of the little barn here. I don't know if I've ever shown the inside of the little barn, but that's where I keep all my gas. Snowblower I found at the dump. Can you believe that? Somebody throws that out. Fired up like a second pole. Got another leaf blower. Got my Skag Hydro walk behind. I also have a belt drive one. Uh, which one of these are full? Oh, this one's full. All right, we'll take this one. A lot of money in gas and diesel sitting in there. I'll tell you that much, but 
You know what's nice? <sighs> Having this big tool rack. I got everything I need. I never have to go, like, get stuff. Well, I'm saying that now. <laughs> If I had a full five gallon gas can in here, I would have never had to go get stuff. But you know, you could carry your mix, your oil, backpack of camera gear, rakes, shovels. I put the Mingo marker in here, chains, you know, the whole nine yards. You don't have to load up every time. You have plenty of room to put stuff, plus extra ballast with the tube sand. That's how I got that going back here. Enough chit chat. Let's get back to splitting wood. You know, it's wild. I find all these old gas cans, these metal ones at the dump, believe it or not. And I can never understand why, because these things work so well and they're so durable. Um, you know, you literally push a button on the back and it starts coming out. You know, it lets air go in. None of these newfangled, crazy safety contraption, you know, safety nozzle things that exchange air and gas at the same time you know these old ones they just plain work and yeah you might spill a little bit but you know what i just filled up this gas tank in less than a minute and i'd rather fill it up in less than a minute and spill a little bit of gas than sit here for five minutes trying to futz around getting in that crazy safety nozzles and get back to work you know what i mean some things just keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> Here we go, back to splitting. Well guys, that's a wrap. We got a nice full large tote, 330 gallon filled up with some pieces shoved down in the middle to prevent it from shifting. Made a nice dent in this pile. Got a lot of the bigger rounds out of the way. I was just focusing on uh, getting the larger ones done. That way, uh, you know, I'll start with the harder ones first while I'm here by myself. And uh, for time, we are at 7.06. Now I did have to stop to go get gas, but I mean, we'll call that an hour to fill up one of these large totes by myself here. So I think that just goes to show that uh, the size of your material, quality of your material has everything 100% to do with your productivity. Um, because a couple of videos back, if you remember, I filled up an entire full tote, 330 gallon, and I think it was 35 minutes. And that was loaded onto the splitter, split, and stacked um so i mean i think the proof is in the pudding right there that um you know if you have smaller rounds you can work faster especially if you're by yourself uh like basically in half the time um now these big rounds if i had chris here with me um it would have been a huge help just because he can stand on the other side and help you know manhandle th those pieces as i break them down into quarters he could put the big pieces over onto the uh the log lift over there and I can just focus on busting them down smaller. Um, Sarah would have been a big help here just to help stack. But again, like she said that she likes those smaller rounds because I just push them through once and she can stack them and it moves fast. Whereas with these, the really is the, or I mean with these as in the big rounds, there really isn't anything for her to do stacking wise until I quarter it and then, you know, like start busting down those quarters. So it's a little bit less fast paced, I should say. However, you know what? In the end, it's all firewood. A tote a day keeps the doctor away. Somebody said that in the comments section the other day, and I had to chuckle at that. I like that idea. I'm going to try and do a tote a day for as long as I can uh, keep going. You know, I got plenty of wood here. So as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I, I really appreciate you guys subscribing and all the feedback and comments. All the analytics right now have been through the roof. It's great. 
I got a goal of trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by sometime in August. If you guys could help me achieve that, that would be awesome. So if you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below. If you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Questions, comments, feedback, throw it down in that comment section. I got 200 something other videos back in the archives. Go back, check them out. Everything from tree work to tractor work to chainsaw modification, log splitter modification. Check it all out. I appreciate you guys watching the video so, so much. My name is Jake. This is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time. Oh, by the way, Sarah came down and told me I had till 7 o'clock, so I'm not that late, but I got a boogie. <laughs>